NetSpark are the developers of desktop and cloud-based web application security scanners that enable you to automatically identify vulnerabilities in your web applications and web services. NetSparker scanners employ a unique and dead accurate vulnerability scanning engine that automatically verifies vulnerabilities with their proof of concept. For more information, visit them on the web at netsparker.com or email at contact at netsparker.com. Signal Sciences secures the most important web applications, APIs, and microservices of the world's leading companies, protecting over 7,500 applications and 150 billion production requests per week, Signal Science's next-gen WAF and RASP help companies increase security and maintain site reliability without sacrificing velocity, all at the lowest total cost of ownership. Signal Science's patented technology protects any application against any attack with integrations into any DevOps tool chain. Signal Science's, demand more from your WAF. Learn more at signalsciences.com forward slash PSW. Welcome back to Paul Security Weekly. We would like to uh, probably should have read an announcement because we did it out of order. Um, before we get started, make sure you go to InfoSec World 2019, April 1st through the 3rd at Disney's Contemporary Resort. You can use the discount code OS19-SECWEEK for 15% off the main conference or a world pass. No stranger to the show. In fact, he was just in the previous segment. Mr. Ed Scotus is with us. You won't find uh, a nicer, more helpful, full of not just extremely valuable knowledge on security topics, but uh, given us great advice uh, over the year, not just to myself, but many in security, Mr. Ed Scotus. Oh, shucks. Thank you. That's You're so kind. I appreciate it. It's good to be back on the show. It's good to see I you. Know. We, I know. We missed you, Ed. I didn't get enough of my Ed Scotus time this year, I, I feel like. We need to fix that. I got, some, I got some great Ed Scotus time. That's at, good. Uh, it's important. Hack, at Sans Hackfest. It's important. Yeah, we had some fun at Hackfest. And then the other time, Larry, that we spent together, we don't need to get into the details. but I mean, we can I'll if you want. But I, Little spoon, <laughs> big spoon. You know what? I don't want to know. <laughs> But 2019, yeah, Paul, yeah, we yeah. got to get together. Yeah, uh, you absolutely. come to the office, or maybe I'll come up to the studio or something. Sounds we great. Do it. Yeah, or both. So, just, Paul, yeah. for Larry and Ed, it involved an MRI machine. I'll just leave it at that. That's, that's <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. that's. Was wow. When we think of when you think of a fetish, that's not the first place that my brain would go. Ironically enough, but <laughs> especially Ryan especially Harker, with a guy Ryan with Harker. a lot of especially with a guy with a lot of piercing. Yeah, that, that could be <laughs> interesting. Anyway, so Ed. Everyone yes. is so, I mean, the anticipation that is built around these challenges now, did you ever uh, believe that it would build up uh, to this point where so many people, Ed, are so excited and just keeps growing year after year? You, mm -hmm. you must be so so proud and excited and probably really nervous as the pressure I, kind of mounts more and more every year. I am, I'm super thankful. Uh, I had no idea this would happen. The first uh, Holiday Hack Challenge I wrote, I did it myself. It was back in 2002. It was called How the Grinch Hacked Christmas. It was all done in rhyme, uh, and it was really simple. I put it together in a day. You could answer it in the space of an hour. Um, and it just kind of grew over time. And now I've got my whole team plus a bunch of volunteers. I mean, there's probably 20, 25 people that end wow. up working on Holiday Hack. We've got musicians that we commission music from, a video game, the best hacking challenges we can possibly make, a little virtual world, uh, a storyline. I mean, it's, it's this big production. And we are close to releasing it this year. Close. Mm. I want to ask how close. Well, we, you know, here's the deal. There's, there's about 10,000 people that play each year, although this wow. year we're looking like it's going to get bigger. It might be mm -hmm. twelve or 15,000. So we usually do a soft launch. Mm -hmm. That is, we'll put it out before we announce it, just to kind of see how the technology behaves mm -hmm. and so forth. And this year we've actually done a series of rolling launches. I, I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with this. In July, we did a thing called Christmas in July, where we released registration for what we call KringleCon. And we talk about KringleCon in more detail later, but it's registration. You can pick your little avatar and how you're going to look in the world. Then in October, we opened up LineCon. So this was another kind of a preview thing. It, KringleCon is this hacker conference hosted at the North Pole. You can actually log into it and kind of see the virtual line forming outside of LineCon. So that was in October. So we're giving these little preview glimpses. And as of last night, we had 10,000 people signed up for the preview glimpses. Wow. So when we launch soon, we're yeah. expecting to probably hit maybe 12 or 15,000 people. So we do these soft launches to kind of scale up in volume. If, if we were to like say, hey, we just launched. And no, that's not a hint that we just launched. I don't want people to think, oh, they're probably hitting refresh right now on it. So it's, um, so it's not like ShmooCon ticket sales. 
It's not like Schmoocon or DerbyCon ticket sales for that matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, instead, we, we kind of just put it out there, you know, usually the <laughs> second week of December or so. Um, and then we let it run for a day or two. And then when we're feeling comfortable with it, then we announce it to everybody. So um, it's, it's kind of the, the way we've done it historically. So if we were to just announce it to everyone, there's a good chance it might just crash. Right, because yeah. there's just so much overwhelming load all at the same time. The guys are still adjusting the resource mm-hmm. allocation of the virtual machines um, when we go through our soft launch. So we'll be doing a soft launch soon. I mean, I'd like to give you a hard launch date, but the soft launch is actually the smoother way. It's going to be in full operation, you know, certainly before Christmas. Obviously, we want people to spend some time in the ramp up to Christmas. We want to give them a good amount of time between Christmas and New Year's to work on it, and then we we have it open year round. I mean, you can play last year's or the year before, the year before that, you can go ahead and play those in July or May or September. Uh, but we, we offered in a competitive way. So you can actually win prizes from about the second week of December up to the first business Monday in January. Hmm. So, so we try to give people, you know, three weeks or so, uh, to compete in it uh, and have fun. The, the big point here though, is learning. It's, it's all about, you know, giving back to the community networking and meeting people and learning new skills uh, that'll be useful and valuable to people. I mean, that's really what it's about. There's, there are some people who compete and that's great. We welcome them. We love those folks, but 99% of the people who come and join us are there just to learn and network. I tell you, there's entire uh, high school classes of kids that wait for holiday hack challenge. And they do that, you know, before they go on their uh, holiday break, there's, you know, people in government agencies, there's teams, um, in various military groups around the world, they just wait for Holiday Hack to come out, and we love that. I mean, it's it's just great. Yeah, to, no, and it's you know, it's interesting. On Monday of this week, we interviewed Chris LG, who I understand now now works for you. He yeah. did a fantastic job of not saying anything. Like if we but hinted did, towards but Holiday Hack Challenge, he was like, I no, I, I can't I can't talk about that. He, he was he said very, on the status very, call that we had. Mm-hmm. I think it was on Sunday because. I tell you, we, we have a conference call every day from Thanksgiving to maybe two days before Christmas. So it's all the way through launch. We have a, we have a mm-hmm. conference call every day, the whole team. Because including including the weekends and holidays. Including weekends and holidays, everything. Yep. And uh, Chris mentioned, I think, on our Sunday call uh, this week, hey, I'm going to be on uh, Paul's show. I think it was Monday. Is that mm-hmm. what he's on? Yeah, it was Application Security Weekly on this Monday. Yes. Right, right. Great show. Great show. Thank you. And uh so anyway, I called Chris after he mentioned that on the call, and I said, so what are you planning on telling them? So yeah. we kind of went through, here's, here's what's allowed to be talked about, right. and here's what we don't talk about. And he said, and I was a little shocked at this, Paul, he said you were very well behaved and didn't ask him stuff that made him uncomfortable. So, Yeah, you know, it's, I, it's funny you say that, Ed. You know, this is on Paul Security Weekly. This show is where we kind of let our hair down, and we have a few mm-hmm. cocktails. Our other shows that are on the network, a lot of people still don't know, they're – very business like it's during the day most of the time we're not drinking <laughs> it's very <laughs> it's very different feel from from this show so yeah and, that's good and ed truthfully it's mostly because i didn't let paula ask any questions so well yeah and <laughs> also keith is the i should give keith uh, all the credit for that keith is the primary host for that show so uh thanks should go to keith for for an awesome show because well, i just you, show keith. up thank to you. application security Chris? weekly Chris, Chris loved being on the show. He, he said it went great. He really had a good time with it. And he is a really wonderful guy. He is. He's, he's, a, yeah. he, he's done amazing development in this year's Holiday Hack, and he's just a delight to work well, with. No, and, really. and I wanna, uh, my next question is along those lines. We talked about Application Security Weekly, building software applications. I personally work with a lot of startups, a lot of security vendors that are pushing out mm-hmm. software and products all the time. Uh, have you... If I if you have I missed it, but have you created any content to talk about your strategy for software development, making sure it's secure and rolling it out and making sure that it has the integrity and uptime that the community expects? Because it sounds like, especially this year, you've yeah. really come a long way. Have you thought about sharing your experiences on that? Because it sounds like you guys have an awesome process. Well, I don't know if we have an awesome process. We have a process that's evolved over time. And it's primarily put together by my guys, not me. I mean, I, I, I give them sort of the high level direction. We need this, we need to test to that, we need to scale to this. But they come up with the, the operations uh, stack, you know, the technology stack that we need. They come up with ways to automate the testing. I mean, today, uh, you know, I don't think this is giving anything away, but we threw a thousand virtual users into mm-hmm. uh, KringleCon just to see what would happen. And performance was great. Um, stability, well, we're working on it. 
Sure. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. But so, I, what, one of, and, one of the, and one of those. Post. Sorry, and you know, sorry, and to one of those things I noticed that has changed uh, because I've been blogging in every day just to you know get hang out for a few minutes and and see what's happening. Um, yeah. that, that I'm uh, specifically noting that there is no music today. Mm, yeah, yeah, and it's and my lo- and my login. Well, there was music the other day. Yes, there was. And my it's login, ready. my login experience was also different today. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Band is getting ready. The elves are working around the clock. I've been getting up myself every day at 4.30 a.m., which is not that unusual, but I've been going to bed around 8.30 or 9, which is a little unusual because I need my sleep so that I can be coherent when I get up at 4.30. That's not a normal thing for me when I get up at 4.30. I don't have to be coherent. The team has been working. Some of them work all night long. Um, we're almost there. Santa's Castle is just about ready. Um Larry, you spoke at uh, KringleCon. I did. Or will be speaking at KringleCon. Now, wait, I'm confused. Hold on. What do you mean speaking at KringleCon? Ed, Ed tell us. Please, I'm confused. Oh, so, so here's, here's the idea. If, if you go back over the last three years of Holiday Hack Challenge, 2015, 2016, 2017, there's been a holiday supervillain who's tried to either destroy the holiday season or actually destroy the North Pole itself. In 2015, it was Cindy Lou Who, age 62. In 2016, it was Doctor Who. In 2017, it was Glinda the Good Witch of Oz. So in 2018, Santa Claus said, enough is enough. He contacted me and he's like, dude, we got to stop this with the holiday supervillain thing. Um, What we need to do is to host a hacker conference at the North Pole. Santa's going to open up his castle. We're going to invite hackers and information security professionals from around the world. Cyber defense. We're going to invite DFIR people. We're going to invite hackers. We're going to invite the whole bunch. Come to the North Pole. We're going to have a virtual conference. All you need is an HTML5 browser. This is all Santa's idea. People will come into the castle. We'll have a bunch of rooms, and, and people will go in there and see the talks. So we have 22 talks um, from amazing speakers. Uh, Dave Kennedy is keynoting it. He was the first one outside of my team that knew about this. I actually told him on Halloween Day 2017. So it was over a year ago. Um, Santa first came to me, it was about 15 months ago and said, Hey, I want to do a virtual con. So, um, so, uh, we've got Dave Kennedy who's keynoting, uh, from trusted sec. We've got, uh, you know, Larry's presenting there. Yes. John Strand's actually giving two talks at the same time, which is something only John <laughs> Strand can do. That's it, awesome. through, through the, uh, and, and only through the magic of the North pole, right? That's right. Yeah. Santa has this time dilation technology so that we can have speakers presenting at the same time. You could also pause a speaker right in the middle of a conference room and go to another room and start another speaker up there. And, um, it's, it's really, we've seen seen Santa's time dilation. That was what last year. Uh, he did some time traveling back in 2016 where we had the time traveling train that went back to 1978. Yes. Wait, hold on. You referenced Santa's castle. Is that Yeah. Santa has a castle? I, dude, I know Santa's in the dude, North where Pole. Dude, where you been? Has it always been a castle? Yeah. Did I just miss that, that fact? Yep. Is it, in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in 1964? Ever, Paul? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Wait. Oh, oh. Go ahead. I, I was just saying, Paul, have you not seen the claymations ever? Oh, okay. Yes. Rankin and Bass, 1964. Yeah. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Santa had a castle. That was the skinny Santa, remember? Uh... Um, yeah, so he had a castle. Anyway, you'll get to go into the castle, kind of hang out there, solve a bunch of challenges. Um, but the idea of KringleCon is to bring all these people together, have sort of a social kind of networking thing. There's going to be little mini games that you can play, um, and then hacking challenges. Santa's going to issue you a series of questions. There would be 10 questions, and you get to try to solve them. And our big hope is this year, you know, let's hope there's not going to be a supervillain who tries to, you know, ruin everything. Because that would be bad. Mm, let's hope. Right. <laughs> mm. And if there is, I bet you'll have to find them and fork them. Santa Claus Kenobi, you're my only hope. <laughs> That's right. Ed, as you add more components and functionality to each year's challenge, yeah. uh, how do you manage and implement security controls as you're inviting over 10,000 hackers to come play your game, yeah, Ed? How, how do you manage and control that? So we have a really good team here. And uh, you know the developers and the ops team, they're very careful. But sometimes stuff happens. Mm. So I've also got, you know, on the CounterHack team, some great penetration testers, uh, folks like Jeff McJunkin and Ron Bose, and they go in and they test things. Also, um, Tom Hessman, who's from my ops team, he mm-hmm. does a lot of testing, looking for security flaws and things. And, uh, you know, in the past, he's found stuff like SQL injection, cross-site scripting um, in, in our stuff. 
before it goes out. Mm -hmm. So we do pen test our own stuff. You could say, well, we're eating our own dog food, but it's a separate group on the team Mm -hmm. from the people who are doing actual development, but they're all together on the same team. And I, and I hear one of your guys that I, that I might know is, uh, is helping to lead some of that, that project. Actually, we were talking about him just, uh, right at the intro of the show that you bought some GIFs that you bought him the gift of GitHub. Who was that? Mr. Gosh, right? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gosh, right. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Josh is actually technical lead over the, the whole project. Um, and he does a fantastic job. He works tirelessly. Josh is one of the most productive people in the world. Uh, yes, and I agree. Uh, he spends a lot of time on holiday hack and I'm very thankful for all of his efforts there. Um, when we have these, you know, daily calls, what I usually do is when the call starts, I kind of give the high level stuff and say, here's what has got to be done. This is mission critical. And then we turn it over to Josh and Josh goes through all the action items and makes sure all the assignments are done. So uh, it's it's quite an operation. Yep. Have, having had the opportunity to work with Josh, yeah, absolutely. He's he's one of the most prolific content creators I think I've ever encountered. And just, really I don't know, things just go right for him. Like I try to install something on Linux and it takes me three days. He does the same thing and it works like in 30 seconds. I'm like, you know, and, and, and you know, you want to hate him and, and sometimes you can, but most often you can't. Yeah. yeah, it's fleeting moments of hatred. I think when that it is, when that it type is of situation, searing, yeah. searing hatred, um, because he's just so good. But yep. then you realize that Josh is also one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in the oh world, gosh. and you you can't be mad at him. And you just love him. him. Yeah, you yeah. just fall in love with him again. Uh, yeah. Now, see, I, I, I have, Josh has a special place in my heart, um, which we just changed. Not that he changed the place in my heart. We just changed the situation recently. But I got to get that little bit of hatred for Josh out because I got to kick him repeatedly. Oh, oh, martial arts. Yes. yes. So Josh uh, was going to be my rebreakable board holder for our black belt, mm-hmm. my black belt test on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so Josh would come and practice, and I got to kick Josh repeatedly. <laughs> While he's wow. holding a pad, of yeah. course. No, a rebreakable board. Oh, rebreakable board. And boards, sometimes yeah. I kicked his fingers. Ouch. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Accidentally. Oh, yeah. And it's like, don't do that. He has to like write yeah, exa- code and exactly. stuff. Exactly. There was true. one, and and we had to practice together as a team because it's a it's a team thing. And we we're going to Hackfest together, mm-hmm. or no, we were going to some con together, uh, Vegas. And I said, ah, okay. Josh, I can bring my board to Vegas, and we can maybe we can find an afternoon to practice. And I'm like, but if I break your fingers, not such a good idea. Not a good idea. So mm-hmm. no, yeah, no, don't do that. You know. So we don't know when it's launching soon, Ed. Very soon. Yep, very soon. soon. So very soon or soon? Right in between. <laughs> uh, so so medium very I don't soon. Think it looks like it's going to launch tonight. It's not going to launch tonight. Um, tomorrow. Well, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow technically is not tonight. <laughs> it is. Correct. So so be on the lookout. It's it's coming soon, and uh, you just know like I wish I could tell you just the date, but like I said, we're gonna we're gonna ramp up. Uh, we want it to be, you know, the best quality stuff that you can get. You're going to have fun with it. It's going to be silly and weird. You're going to start working your way through it, and it's going to be fun and interesting mm-hmm. at a conference. And then you're going to be like, what just happened? Yep. And then you'll continue, and there's a whole storyline that's going to, you know, unfold right before your very eyes. I tell you, so last week I – heard from santa claus and he told me what 2019 is going to be about i was just going to ask that uh, yeah and then this morning three new things came to me and i shared a couple with with two people on my team what's uh what the plan is for 2019 oh my gosh it, they're all excited that's the thing when you start working on you know the following years before this year's launches you're almost kind of like well gee whiz i want to just build next year so. right yeah. So, yep. so yeah, and and, and I was, that was one of the questions I was going to ask is, have you already started working on next year's? That clearly the answer is yes, because I know I know how these things go. Um, yep. You know, especially when you say this year was fifteen months in the making. Yep. That clearly means you had started having some ideas and some development effort, at least some minimal ones, prior to last year's even being over or started. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah. The idea first for this year's first came to me in network security. I remember uh, this. 2017. I was there. Yeah, that was so that was I think it was September, maybe October 2017. Mm-hmm. And I never told anybody this, but do you want to hear the story of how KringleCon the idea came to me? Yes. yes. So I'm teaching the 560 class. And you know, we're still working on, you know, Holiday Hack 2017 with, you know, Glinda the Good Witch and all that kind of stuff. And um, the, you know, Holiday Hack 2017 is going to launch in 3 months. 
And I'm sitting there in front of the classroom thinking, you know, teaching the class and so forth. And I look down and there's this one guy and he's wearing a shirt. And I, I looked at what it said on his shirt and I'm like, wait, what? And then I moved back and then I saw that his shirt didn't say what I thought it said, but it gave me the idea. The spark mm. came to me. His shirt, the, when I saw it, his shirt said SantaCon. Mm. And I'm like, Santa's going to hold a conference at the North Pole. And then I moved and I saw what his shirt really said. It said SaintCon, Saint mm -hmm. which I don't know. Is, is that St. Louis or where's St. Con? Uh, I'm not uh, sure. To the, the Google, my good man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, wherever St. Con is. So anyway, but the, the idea hit me. It's SantaCon. But uh, you can't call it SantaCon because that's like a, a you know, bar crawl kind of thing. So we called it KringleCon yeah, instead. Mm. But I took this guy up, the guy who kind of inspired this by wearing his St. Con shirt. I took him up in front of the class without the classroom hearing it. And I kind of pulled him aside. I said, dude. Do you want to hear what the theme of Holiday Hack Challenge 2018 is going to be in 15 months? He's like, what? I said, you inspired it. Your shirt inspired it. He's like, what's it going to be? I said, it's going to be SantaCon. It's going to be Santa Claus is hosting a conference at the North Pole, and it's all because of your shirt. And the guy seemed pretty happy. I don't know, you know where it is today, but uh, we're holding a conference because of that guy's shirt. So that was uh, 15 months ago. And the talks, like I said, are really good. We asked people to keep their talks to like 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. because, you know, it's a virtual talk online. And, uh, you know, we kind of wanted it to keep really focused. How long was yours, Larry? Do you remember? It was about 22 minutes, roughly. So, went over a so, little bit. Yeah, some people follow instructions. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does it Ed, surprise you that Ed, Larry didn't follow instructions, I'm right? Like, I mean, on. I mean Ed, and Ed, if you'd asked me, I would have kept it to 15 minutes. So right. Ed, is, is the, Ed is the only <laughs> way to watch these talks to be inside the game. And will that be true forever? So, um, we are going to launch with uh, you go into the castle, you walk into the speaker rooms. There's going to be an agenda there. You click on the agenda and you'll see the whole thing. Um, you walk into the rooms. You can see the other participants in the rooms and you can chat with them. But if you click on a button, you will be taken to our hosting organization that is hosting the talks. We're very delighted that uh, YouTube is doing that for us. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you, you can watch them inside our, our virtual castle and have chats with other people who are watching the same talk as you're watching at the same time. Or you have the ability to view them outside of it. But I don't want to get into the details of how that works. Sure. Because I want to see it. When you see it, you're yeah, going to be yeah, like, yeah. wow, that's cool. Nice, nice. And, and when, you, when you did the storyboarding, as you would need to do for any of your games, yeah. do you have tips for those that might be putting together a presentation a challenge of their own or, or, or some other story that relates? Like, how do you do the storyboarding for the game? Do you have tips for, for people? Well, sh sure. The, the biggest thing I find is you can fix almost anything with narrative. My, my, sometimes I don't want to you know, pick on anybody on my team, but they'll be like, wait a second, this technical challenge doesn't work in the way that the story anticipates, so i got to change all the technical challenge. And I'm like, no, I'll just change the story. Right. I mean, we kind of control the the you know yeah. the physics of this universe. You know, we had this thing like people are going to be watching these YouTube videos in the same room at different times, and you know, isn't that going to be weird? And I'm like, no, it's Santa Claus's time dilation technology. Everybody knows he has that, right? I mean, we can just yeah. so so being flexible and nimble in the storyline and adapting sort of the, the the rules of logic and physics, and and you got to make your storyline coherent. You mm -hmm. want it to make sense according to its own rules and flow. Um, but I do, there is a flow and I document, I mean, look, I just do it in Microsoft Word. You know, you say storyboarding and all that. It's not mm -hmm. quite so fancy. It's in Word and we drag things around. Josh Wright is a great foil. We're just, you know, does this make sense? This kind of flow. Um, but he is, I, he I is write a great the narratives. Foil. Go ahead, I'm sorry. He is a great foil. He is. He, aluminum foil, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> or if you're in the UK, aluminium. Aluminium, yes. Yeah. That's even how they spell it. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, but so, so I just put it down in Word and drag and drop things. And I, I spend, you know, I spend a, probably five or six months toying with it an hour every week or so. So it's give yourself a lot of time to storyboard stuff. Yeah. Um, be flexible in your narrative style. Try to be fun, playful. Uh, pull in ideas from lots of different sources. I even like to pull in sort of language or like pseudo quotes or even writing styles from different sources. Like we did the one back in uh, 2014 which was a Christmas hacking carol where it was Scrooge. So I spent a lot of time reading Charles Dickens to, to try to be able to write like Charles Dickens. Um, I'm not saying I achieved that goal, mm, but sure. it's something I was trying to do. Um, and you'll see this year, if you look very carefully, a lot of the dialogue is inspired by sources that you should be able to recognize. Excellent. Um, 
Yeah. Wow, so, he had so, me thinking I, he was going to give something away there. We did. Oh, I was no, like, no. he did. Come right to the edge. Right, like, right to the edge with that. <laughs> yes. But he did give yeah, something that, away in that he went right to the edge. And and as Ed has said on the, the, the Sands blog and, and elsewhere, you know, over the last six months or so, pretty much anything that any counter hack employee has done publicly, talks, you name it, blog posts have in some way, shape, or form been something that may help you in the game. And this is pretty yeah. consistent. There's there's a lot of stuff that I've said and tweeted in the last three or four months that you'll see manifesting itself in the game. Yep. Um, you'll also... This year we went light on the blogs. Uh, we released one blog a couple days ago. It was Ron Bowes posting on some interesting topics. Mm -hmm. But most of the counter hack hints this year are actually in-game in the form of KringleCon videos. Mm. So... It, if 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 you go in the game and you see a counter hack person, we're talking, you know, Chris LG or Chris Davis or Brian Hostetler or any of those guys, if you see a talk from them, that means it's a hint. Yeah, way to get people to go to your guys' talk heads instead of everybody else's. Well, yeah, so like, I, you know, there's a method to my madness. Like like, J, <laughs> like Jay Beals or Mike Poors or mine. Now here's the deal though. <laughs> They'll be presenting in the same room as other non counter hack people. Right. So people will go into the room maybe to see, you know, what Chris Elgie's talking about, but then Larry's talk might be in the same room with it. So they'll so we we didn't they they came to me like a week ago and said, Should we put all the counter hack people in the same speaking room? Because we've got a bunch of speaking mm. rooms. And I said, No, I want them spread out all over the place because I want people to kind of mingle and walk around. And yeah. I'm afraid that if they're just looking for hints, they'll just stay in one room. But I want them to walk around mm. to different rooms. Yep, smart, smart. Speaking, uh, speaking of hints, and I'm not asking you to give any hints, um, yeah. but have you been in tune with what has been happening at LineCon? I go into LineCon every day or two. I'm so busy trying to get this thing out yep. the door. So I, what's up with LineCon now? Oh, oh, it's not that there's something up, but I'm just wondering, you know, what's in tune with LineCon? Can you tell me about bot? Um, so, okay. So bot. Bot yeah. is not us. People ask me all the time, is bot you? No, somebody wrote bot. And then they're like, well, are you mad that somebody wrote bot? So for those that don't know, you go into LineCon. Not now, though. Bot shut down a couple days no, ago. No, no, bot's there. Oh, bot's there? It wasn't there when I went in last night. Bot, bot apparently is well-behaved. Uh, bot yeah. is uh, uh, tweeting or about Chris Elgie's talk, or tweeting, uh, conversing about uh, Chris Elgie's, uh, Elgie's uh, talk on Application Security Weekly. and So yeah. bot follows you around as you move around. That's not us. Somebody wrote it. And, you know, people are like, are you upset? And like, not really, um, as long as bot doesn't break anything or hurt anything or annoy anybody. And if that happens, then, well, then we got a problem. But bot's been very well behaved, so we're cool with bot. You know, another thing that people ask me all the time is, do you allow teams? Yes. Well, how big can a team be? I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, look, we have no way of enforcing it, right? So if, and I told you earlier, there's entire, uh, you know, 20 or 30 uh, student classrooms of high school students that play this and they all work together. So we have no ability to enforce team size. So teams can be two people, five, 10, 20. You can play solo, 30, 50. I mean, whatever you want. Remember, the focus is on learning That's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and having fun, right? Right. So we don't need the team size. If you want to write a bot, you can as long as it doesn't break anything, as long as it doesn't hurt anything, and as long as it doesn't annoy people. All right, so what can you tell me about DNA? Ah, the DNA, that's so cool. A few people have noticed it. Have, have you actually seen I the have. DNA? I have, I yeah. have. So my suggestion to people is when they create their avatar, get the Chrome developer tools and poke around at the assets that are in there that are part of the makeup of your actual avatar. You get to choose your avatar's eyes and mouth and head and torso, and you get to choose the legs. Um, but not not the shoes, and you get to choose a whole bunch of different things in there, and uh, it I, creates a, a genotype I'd, of your. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to choose arms. I could care less yeah, about there's shoes. No arms. <laughs> there's no arms. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, go figure. Um, but uh, but those, anyway, you get a you get a genotype with the DNA of your avatar. If you look, you can see it's kind of embedded into the page, which is pretty cool because that <laughs> actually it's quite interesting. We were having a discussion today about the speakers and pulling all of their avatars. And, you know, somebody on the team said, well, you know, what we could do is we could go in there 
find each speaker, find their avatar, send a picture of the avatar. And uh, Evan Booth, the guy who designed the DNA, is like, no, just send me the genetic sequence of the avatar, and then I've got it. <laughs> so, like, why didn't I think of that? Of course. Is everyone's uh, DNA unique for their avatar? Or is there some not, overlap? For their given type. And, and look, there, I mean, there's, I haven't done the math, but there's so many possible combinations of, of avatars mm-hmm. that it would be unlikely that two are identical unless somebody purposely made them identical. Right. And, mm-hmm. and if so, if Paul were to observe my avatar and were to recreate that same avatar on sign up, we would have identical DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are, in fact, identical. And there, there are rumors, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rumors. Now, now mm-hmm. speaking of which, I, I've been following along with some of this stuff. If I change my DNA, yes. do I change in game? You do change in game. Okay. Sure. So, in other words, if I get shoes. Well, the interesting thing is, what if you change your DNA to a combination that doesn't exist? Hmm. You would be very special indeed, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes, I would. You might even be the one. What? Wait. What? 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 To- <laughs> there is totally no spoon. Don't try jumping character. across the building. I'm going to have no DNA and be walking around in that game. It's going to be the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Keith, naked. So, <laughs> it's going to launch... Sometime soon, not very soon, but soon or some time in between. It's yep. KringleCon.com. Uh, yep, that's with a K for Kringle and C for Con. KringleCon.com. Awesome. And you can register now and hang out in LimeCon and look at Larry's DNA. Yep. Just what I always wanted. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Well, we <laughs> thank you for your contribution to the community, Ed. It's uh, fantastic. I just... Uh, I can't wait to see like what you come up next every year. Uh, it just gets so more and more awesome, and so many uh, more things to talk yeah. about. I just it's oh, just oh, awesome. I, I am so impressed by it, and you, Ed, you probably get this uh, all the time. That I, I love uh, you know, all of the holiday hack challenges. Aside from speaking this year, I wish there was something more in which I could participate. Maybe design a challenge of some variety. Oh, or, next year, please, next year. So. And, uh, you know, I really want to make sure that I give credit to the team. It's oh, the team course. that has worked so hard. I mean, there's speakers. We've got 22 speakers, like I told you earlier. Thank you to the speakers. Thank you to all the developers of the challenges, the software developers, the ops team. Um, I mean, my hat's off to them. I'm so thankful for all the work that they do. Really, they, they bring this forth uh, for the community. Um, and uh, they deserve the credit. Awesome. Ed, thank yeah. you so much. Uh, I hope everyone has fun playing uh, KringleCon and uh, attending and all that fun stuff. It was doing that over there. your holiday break, which is uh, it, it was great. It was great to speak there. The train ride up there was amazing. I bet. I yeah. bet. Yeah. Long hey, trip. Hey, Thanks for coming to the North Pole. Uh, well, well, due to Santa's magic, it wasn't nearly as long as I thought it was going to be. Mm. <laughs> That's right. So, so, Larry, Larry, maybe we could do the uh, Security Weekly Challenge uh, next uh, next year oh. as co-hosts. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Okay, that mm. went down like a lead balloon. Mm. Oh, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> they're processing it all. I am too. I mean, this might be kind of cool. That mm. might be kind of cool. That's what mm. I was just thinking. Because so. I will say, Ed, that uh, a number of folks that are in line at KringleCon uh, right now have been very stoked about this whole live segment. We're oh, hoping cool. for hints. So. Yeah. And are, they looking, are they looking at the DNA? <laughs> but yes. The- yes. They're definitely looking at the DNA. Are they manipulating the DNA? They're definitely manipulating the DNA. It That's sounds good. like there. It sounds like there were some hints. I mean, I don't think Ed, you should necessarily tell people if there were hints or not. But mm-hmm. it sounds to me, my observation is there might have been some subtle hints. Oh yeah. Yep. yep. I'm moving D- things forward. Yep. You yep. might. You definitely want to listen to the entire show. Yes. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Well, Ed, thank you so much for coming Thanks, on Paul Security it's Weekly. A pleasure. Always great seeing you. You guys rock. Awesome show. Ha- awesome show. Have fun at CDI, Ed. Thanks. I'm going uh, actually tomorrow. See ya. Woo-hoo. Awesome. See ya. With that, we'll take a short break. Come back. We're going to bring on Don Murdoch. Stay tuned. <laughs>